Thank you. Um, our guest list. St. Clair Street are not able to park on St. Clair Street because there's a lack of parking in that area. The residents of Presley have a difficulty with their parking because there's a lack of parking in that area. Thomas Dance Studio has come before the zoning hearing board asking for a variance because there is a lack of parking in that area. There is a site plan in front of you, which is, is requesting, is converting from a residential to a commercial use that will require parking. While the site plan shows that there is parking, there are some questions regarding the square footage. Again, trying to create more demand for parking without an adequate supply. Because of all of those needs, I am hoping that council will request that the Bridgeville Borough Parking Authority establish a public parking lot to service the north end of Washington Avenue. Public parking in densely populated, in densely, in dense areas is a way to accommodate the multiple needs of a variety of property owners. So I'm hoping that council will make a resolution, or at least a motion of some sort, to request that the Bridgeville Borough Parking Authority establish a parking lot at the North End of Washington Avenue. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate the words, and I, and I agree with them, to be quite frankly. That is a, a problem there. We have um, a lot of business you know, interaction up there. The residents of St. Clair Street are struggling to put parking on street. And I would be in favor, in fact, I would make a motion to authorize or at least this, you know, request that the parking authority establish a public parking area. I would do that in the form of a motion. Someone would agree with me. I agree with that. I just have a question. This has been a problem for a long time. This isn't new. Yes. And it's been brought before. Are there recommendations that you've mm -hmm. thought of or that has been discussed in the past? There have been a number of discussions over the, over the last decade. Um, oftentimes the parking authority looking to council, council looking at the parking authority. There are ideas. I think there's a lack of, of, of will to, to, from the community to, to request it. Uh, basically, the motion that, uh, that, that Councilman Anderson just made is what I think may be lacking in the process. And so I appreciate uh, that motion in your second. Well, we, I remember walking Presley Road with you looking for areas. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is not an easy solution to a, a tough problem matter, but we need to try. Uh, I have an excuse we, uh, you know, and I appreciate your motion. I think it's, uh, it's needed. But because the, the authority, the parking authority, is being alert on this many times, many times from, from, from the, the people, and I don't say to you to retreat their motion, but I would like to keep the parking authority other than I to say, look, we're the boss, and we're going to do this now, and that's enough of this. To have, uh, we can table this motion, my, my idea to do that. Every meeting with the parking authority, I say, now look, we on this situation, are you going to move, give them the courtesy to another board, another committee of 
parties. That's my idea. I'm in favor of the merger, you understand? I'm, I'm, my, my, suggestion, my suggestion would be is to take it under public safety and work with, with the parking authority. Because you're the representation of the council. My, my, my motion isn't right. telling them to do yeah. anything. It's asking them to look, for, look, into, look into it. And, and, uh, However we do it. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, the, the issue has been brought to our attention, and I think we need Many to times, it. yes. It's not just pretty. Uh, it's just a courtesy to another community of us. It's all. Maybe we can explore this. Uh, I don't know. I have a, I'm in favor. Don't get me wrong. Because I've been in this situation many times. Uh, we need the party. But whatever. Whatever the board But wouldn't this motion provide that opportunity? Well, this motion is to sit the parking authority. Board. We are the bosses of parking right. authority. So now no question. I don't want to say they were the boss, but they're under our discretion. We can demand that parking authority do that, explore that, and as soon as possible, and come back to us and you'll find a place. We can do that. We can rush them to do that. We just push it. That's what we just push it. Look, do it. No, well, I think this is the last first step. Right. Right. I think we're at that point. If an escort explore, I agree 100%. Okay. And there's two people wanted to add to would like to say yeah. something on it. Yeah, I actually went to, can, I, can you give your name? Sure, my name's Robert McMaster. I'm actually on the list of this. Okay. But, um, I was actually going to talk about the same thing. I live on St. Clair Street again. And I was actually coming to talk about parking. I went to uh, the parking authority last month and asked them to look into it, but they told me they couldn't do anything. That right. I had to come here. So until we do, until we ask them. To yeah. Do. So I mean, yeah, that's what we're working. On. Yeah. So, uh, I would really appreciate it. I mean, okay. John, yeah. you had something. Well, the Presley Street thing is really. Problem. I can I understand what do you do? These people need to park somewhere, but literally the cars are parked on the street, or they're parked on the sidewalk, forcing the pedestrians to walk on the street. It's a real problem. What I discovered was that Don Welsh parking or he's part of it, belongs to the railroad. And I guess there's a battle right now going on between the borough and the railroad about how to maintain it, who's shoveling snow, who's going to grass. That's whatever. not accurate. Well, it, it, they're doing it, it but my, my point is, is it's an empty lot. The railroad really doesn't need it for anything. Is that an outlet that can maybe be made available for people to use? Doesn't burden or show what it costs other than maintaining it, and it gets, gets the, the railroad off the hook for having to maintain it as well. Yeah, it's just a suggestion. I'm not actually, that the yeah. location and actually actually some looks for is that I'm sure the railroad would be happy to lease that to many of them. They leased it to Mr. Welsh. They parted ways. Okay. Um, so that that is a piece of property. It's private property owned so by the railroad company. Right. They lease that property. Yeah, it's yeah. non-operational property. So they yeah, lease. It's a little out of the way. It's, there was a chance that that could have been done. It was the old church. With, with, it was a, a, a part uh, for uh, a parts. There could have been a good time to do it. <laughs> That's the painting place. Also, see that part is both those two buildings there. That's more central to what we should be place of talking about. It makes more sense than the the, the railroad space, which is. That's a little out of the way. Now you take the the people. Believe that who had come with the grocery, of course, they pick it up or drop the grocery first, then they go park the car. I think when it's more convenient if those two property would be acquired by the parking authority because they're right in where we really need parking. Okay. Whatever you want to do, that's fine with me. They need parking there. We have a motion to second on the table. Hey, Bruce. Dennis, sorry. Just a, um, whatever you guys do with the parking authority, and it, it's going to take forever for that to happen. Is it possible that you guys can do something like Dormont does? Because Dormont has a lot of permit parking only on their side streets. 
just for that reason. If you, you know, we, once a year or every six months you get a sticker put on your your windshield. If you don't have the, the sticker and you, you know, you're parked there, you get a ticket, you do it more often, it'll tell you away. Just something to get to clear up the spaces for the residents, the residents of Presley and St. Clair. Because I know it, it's a disaster. But you know, you, you wait till you put a a parking lot in or something, that's gonna take forever. And that's bad on so that group it is bad on it's not very So maybe think about something temporary like that so you know and to give the residents some relief. So the yes. 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 you wanna give your motion I really don't know so we have the it, how how they yeah. worked it out but you know so the, the motion I made was to yeah, to uh, to notify the, the uh, parking authority to explore the um, building of a uh, public parking uh, spot down on the north end. That's good. That's good. That, I like that. seconded. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Aye. Aye. And I think in the meantime, in, in our public safety committee, we will look into something, some other resolutions. That it is temp temporarily to you know, get some relief up there. Uh, just real quick in passing, uh, I want the planning commission to meet in here. A lot of the folks from St. Clair Street were there concerned about the parking of the enhanced mm -hmm. And the Provori had sent out a letter to Bridgeville on the motor time that people were parking, parking vehicles on the sidewalk at one time. Doing next best parking over in the annual uh, paint contract in place. And unfortunately, the word I said that she had a very big amount of the tour on, but you did send them a letter telling them that we're going to drop the camera on. And that's sort of what both of them, I think, was a fact. It's all about the action. We're in our communication and we continue that enforcement. Planning um, Commission, we did put enough on the parking department, as I brought
the, what is, what is the, the building? Pardon? What is the building? What building? 131 is right on the corner, and they are proposing a pet free uh, It's Washington Avenue, Short Street. Yeah, Short Street and Washington Avenue, right on the corner. Um, the building is currently, I mean, the setback is not too deep from the property line, which is already pretty close to the street. Um, can be changed is what it is. Grandfathered in, right? Um, so the garage addition that's being put on, the concern is as whoever is backing in and out of that parking space, the wall of the garage is here. They're backing out, it's already two feet off the road. As they're backing out onto that road, they have zero line of sight until they're in the middle of the, the street. Um, in my mind, that creates a real safety concern. Um, it really, I should like, you know, that should be looked at. The line of sight should be looked at. Um, I know that, I believe that Bridgeville has a 75 foot sight line when you're coming out of a parking space. So you should have clear sight lines for 75 feet. Um, and I don't believe that condition exists. So I think yeah, there's, there's a couple issues around it. And I just think safety is a pretty big issue. It's a fairly dangerous road to begin with. We end up with cars in our front yard more often than we would like to have cars in our front yard. Um, and so I think that's one more turn pass where people miss the turn. And as somebody's backing out and they can't see, and somebody's turning onto that road and they can't see, it just it feels like it's a dangerous condition. Yeah, first of all, we received your comments up here today, and, and as you guys spoke with your husband, um, we have to go Friday as well, mm -hmm. uh, but we were all picturing, and, and actually we have been conversing with the engineer and forwarded actually a letter to, to Sean and Grove, uh, uh, for our engineer this afternoon, and he actually reviewed that this afternoon and is in a position to make a uh, comment. Um, with regard to the first concern, and you know, we appreciate your comments. Um, we certainly uh, appreciate the concerns of, of being there and close and, and in the neighborhood. Um, first, with regard to the, the use of the building. So when an application is submitted to the borough, the applicant makes a representation of, I have X taking up this one space. Um, the check for this will be a time of occupancy permit. It's asserted that, so it's, the applicant has asserted that there's a pet crematorium use that is the use of the structure and the, the area that is designated for retail services or is designated for customer consultation is limited to 700 square feet. Um, so by the by the regulation of the ordinance, that would equate to three spaces that she has. Um, again, though, the check there is if that becomes 1,400 square feet, obviously she's short on parking. The applicant is short on parking becomes an enforcement issue if she's in violation of her occupancy permit for approval. Um, so if the, the application process that comes in, the applicant by definition has to make an assertion as that here's what I propose. We can't assume that there's going to be more. Uh, isn't obviously though an enforcement issue for the borough should council wish to approve. Um, with regard to the, the, the geometric, um, the layout conditions of the site, understand the concerns there of, of backing out onto the street, turnarounds, um, and as we review the ordinance, we, we understand the safety concern, don't believe there would be a specific regulation in the ordinance that would prohibit the layout of the streets. And there's also a pre existing condition. I think there was a mention that she's left on the side. With the building, right? So not the addition? Or just like they're not increasing the non-conformity by the location of the building because it's behind it. It's not like it's jutting out. <coughs> you talk about non-conformity right. increasing. It's when you start invading where you were kind of not aligned. It's not, if you're going lateral along, we're kind of restrained by the law. That's really not an increase in the non-conformity if you're not kind of pushing, you know what I mean, in yeah. the invading right. space, right. so to speak. So we're constrained by the ordinance. Yeah. Yeah, I think the biggest concern is the parking. And it 
it just, it's, you know, once that gene is out of the bottle, mm -hmm. I don't think you can put it back in. And like Sean said, we're hell, it's just like saying if your neighbor, I can give you an example, if your neighbor says he's going to put a detached garage behind their house, and, and then I've just seen this out in folks say, you don't need to deny that because they know they're going to put their business in there. You can't deny it because of what you think somebody may do with it that you have to wait to enforce it. So they're, and they're held to their representation of their work. So if they're using that and it turns out it's time for an inspection or afterwards, if there's an occupancy that's greater than represented, then there'll be a violation of their occupancy. And that's kind of a little restraint when we look at the application of it. Yes, John. Um, with regard to the site decision that you've rendered, um, can you explain to me what Appendix A in the zoning ordinance pertains to? Not the right. The detail of Appendix A notes a street is 75 foot into the property. Of your reasonable assumption there is the property is only 30 feet deep. The detail of you looks at 75 in each yeah. direction, 75 feet back. Can measure 75 feet. But there's also a reference in there that the driveway on your site would be 75 feet. Right. Understood. Okay. Um, so you're saying that it's okay to put a driveway on the edge of the road where you can just back off from the street and there's no, there's really nothing needed. So if I wanted to back on the any street, I could do that without any line of sight, based on your interpretation. As you went into the Okay. And then the, the issue of space, I mean, it's my understanding that every every square foot of the building has to be accounted for, to some degree, whether it's exempt from being counted or not. The question I have is after we build the building, and after this thing's up and running, how do you put that genie back in the car? I mean, we now have another issue to deal with in our community because. She the, the owner decided to run her pet hospice business out of there and needs three spaces for employees that she doesn't have. And would, so you end up with another zoning issue that, or zoning enforcement issue that you obviously don't have a handle on yet. So to open up this one, doesn't that create another, just another stone on, on the carpet that people are going to have to deal with? certainly understand your concern. You are correct there. If there's a second use that goes in there or an expanded use, there's not enough parking. As Mr. McDermott mentioned, you can't, the borough cannot assume a well, future you, violation. Can you shut them down? If and when that occurs, then what will happen is, and that's being noted in the that we noted in the decision, and it's a kind of, it's a premise of their application and the approval. So that if they have an occupancy that's different than like he said, if they expand in scope, if it's different than this, or if they would expand, that would not be uh, a permitted, approved use. And that would be subject to our enforcement. Okay. Just like if the guy goes and sticks his contract with business in a garage in the house <laughs> next door. It's when he does that. He yeah, yeah, but I think it's a little different simply because we know what we're dealing with up front, and we have. We have an office building that has 1,300 square feet. Okay, but I'm sorry. And I don't, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to beat this up. No, 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 so we can only enforce when there's a violation. Okay. Yeah, so what are my rights as a resident of this community to demand enforcement of any type of If you believe, and again, I, by the way, um, just because of sensibilities and whatnot, the law is actually designed for folks. We, if somebody files a right to know request, for example, complaints are anonymous. We don't disclose to people. Mrs. Kravis called a five year grass. We don't do that because we don't want people to do that. And by, at the same time, we don't cite people until we privately send uh, and then it would be a notice to folks saying, hey, bury your dirty laundry, take it to the magistrate. Just want you to know we believe you're in violation. There's some time to fix it. If you think we're wrong, you can appeal that, but otherwise fix it or we're going to go and force you with the magistrate, etc. So both the complaint side of it and the initial attempt to be in compliance are both dealt with in a way that's intended to maintain everybody's respect and anonymity. If that doesn't work, then Lori is well versed in um, taking people to enforcement. And by the way, with regard to not the labor, just the, the, the parking requirement, maybe it's an idiosyncrasy. 
But it's actually not geared in this use case to numbers of employees that it's set. I understand like that. I said it's, it's in the sausage, but we're, we're constrained to say it's based on the public space. If the public is X, the spaces are Y. Well, that's not totally true. If the building is being used as an office, okay, then you account for that office center, right? The office, if I have a crematorium and I have an office where I send my bills out to all my stuff, administration, just like the fellow has a restaurant, there's no separate office building in there. His, he has his office in his restaurant. No, no, I'm talking about that. So so you, you, have have a business. Business. you have an office in there that you rent to your brother in law. That would be a different occupancy and subject to having to have an occupancy permit or, or in the absence of one enforcement. Oh, you realize you're creating. A really infested situation in yeah, acting. Yeah. It's going to be, I'm, I, I can see this from the attorney, right, but it's on you. Yeah. Um, every every single public every every single, every time there's an accident, every single person who files a personal permit or a commercial permit, they make representations, we give them rules that we can strain to based on those applications, and if there's enforcement, that's the best thing. And we're not allowed to deny because we think we'll have to do this before. I think you're allowed to ask the question. This doesn't make sense. I mean, it's, I can't imagine this isn't my right, faith approval. You can't. It's not my faith approval, sir. You know what? It's not a blind faith approval. Well, you know she has they put on paper what they propose. We approve it. The council approves it upon the recommendations that it complies with the ordinance. If they go do an activity or build a facility inconsistent with those, that's when we're allowed to act, and we're not actually allowed to act before it. Okay, and then one more question, then I'll end this with. What 700 square feet of the building has she allocated as the crematorium so that you can go ahead and say, well, okay, you're using the second story, which is an office, but it's not supposed to be part of the crematorium. And she said, well, I don't have anything over here today, so that's different. Is there, is there some kind of allocation of space, or is it just kind of floating in other people? Mr. Winbrook, I'm afraid we're wrong, but I believe the site plan itself has a depiction of what their space is. That will be solidified with their occupancy permit. They're building permit plans for the addition that shows the interior construction. Mm -hmm. I guess my question is, there's no allowance for the employees. We're just we're approving it on three parking places for the, the public squat or the where the public comes in. It's, 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 just to be clear, I understand it's not it's not an employee. This this particular application is not an employee contingent parking application. There are others that are. This one is not. This one has to do with square footage. But it sh but if you open an office upstairs and it has three employees in it, you now have an additional 576 square feet of space that you're using that technically should have been counted in in, in the map for doing the parking space. So my point is is that if this is just a way to game the system to get a permit, then I have to deal with this after that, it's going to be a very frustrating situation. So if, if, we're, if this is legitimate and she's only using 700 square feet, hey, I, I got no beef, right? But if I find out she's now moving into other parts of the building because she has other businesses that she's going to into there, then I got to ask the question, why did we allow ourselves to be in that situation? And that would be no different if another person had started a business across the street without proper permits and started putting parking in there. We would enforce it well, just the same. And, and I have a right to demand enforcement. Is that correct? Right? Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Um, Robert McMaster. Yeah, just everybody wants to talk about parking more. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I believe it was you to say something about normal eyes just to. There's already an ordinance um, that Bridgewell drafted and uh, I found online. Um, it's Ordinance 830. That was drafted uh, February 13th, 1995 um, for residential parking. Uh, I, I do believe, and I didn't bring any papers, I didn't think that I do believe that the residents um, have to incur the cost. So whether it be like street signs um, or like actually paying for placards or stickers, so, I mean, I, I live on St. Clair Street, obviously. So, 
Um, that's probably going to door to door to people to try to get them to realize, like, hey, if you want to do this, we're going to have to pay for street signs and, and placards or whatever else. I think that's that's the ordinance that, that you're referring to from the Gorm on the bridge board it was already drafted. So I appreciate you looking at the parking going up St. Clair. Correct. Are, is it from so there being more cars than the two from that homeowner? Or? Correct. So I live, if, if you're driving up St. Clair Street, um, I live in the second house on the left hand side. So there's one that's offset and I'm, I'm in the very next one. So you figure there's three houses right there before the first triangle. If each house has two cars that parks in that spot, right, there's just enough spots for each house, the three houses that are there, just enough space to have two cars for each and six cars. If anybody else, whether it's somebody walking up the street, going down to the gas station, going to the chutes, going through the auto, if anybody else parks there, we don't have a parking spot. So if you look across the street, I mean, there's other people there that, you know, there's other houses across the street the same, the same type of thing. Um, I will say that, you know, there are people that have driveways uh, directly across from me that don't park in the driveway, but I, I mean, how do you really force them? You know, um, besides being a terrible neighbor, you know, I, I can't. Force them to be in the driveway. But I mean, that's where I'm at. Like, you know, my, my wife is, you know, eight, eight months pregnant. She's due in July. And if she has to park halfway up the street to waddle down the house, so you see where I'm at. So, not, not you know, that would be like, generous. Once in a while, if we can provide a permit for those residents, and they are other basic things for Jackson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's something that's well beyond me. Uh, it would be a legal engineering, whatever it would be, to provide a permit for the rest of it. But I, I would be fair. Uh, and I, I appreciate bringing it up. I really, I mean, um, I really lived on St. Clair Street for three years, so I, I'm kind of new to the whole farming situation. I didn't realize it was a long step. But we need to vote on that now. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm just covering. I'm just trying to get the ball rolling. Yeah, yeah. you know, I, I understand it's going to take you know, probably months to get to get it done, but I mean, just to get the ball rolling because I mean, it quite frankly sucks. Right? That's I, why we I want the parking. That's yeah. why the parking turned into the parking. Right, and, and I was telling everybody. I mean, I, like I, I said earlier, I, mean, I, I, I went to them um, actually with that ordinance. I, I got it ready. Copies of the ordinance. But. Oh, no, actually, I, I was looking at one. If you go online, if you're yeah, online, that's exactly you can talking. find it in that codified right. ordinance. Yep. That's, um, that section 409 and all that. Yep. And not the county officer, but you can look at it. It's a whole procedure by yeah. which you can kind of Absolutely. establish yep. a whole neighborhood area. And, 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 and I mean, I, it, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty well drawn up. But for now, we can, we can, I'm sure, council can. Put a sign over there for expecting mother. <laughs> I mean, really, yeah, yeah, yeah. Daddy, it's yeah, yeah. done all the time. She could have taken that out. But um, yeah, that's, that's well, he's right. He's right what he's saying. That's right. So uh, we, we, we can bench okay, that somehow. I think. appreciate your input now, too. So correct me if I'm wrong. That goes to the same thing. Yes, the same thing. Yeah, just, yeah, just want to make sure you did it. That's the answer to my question. So I know the parking authority's mandate as written was to enhance the business district of Bridgeville, blah, blah, blah. I don't know if that's like legally mindable as far as what solutions they can come up with. Is it, it, well, so what is that true? Are they restricted to only do parking stuff for businesses? That's not true. Okay, I mean, no, 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 I saw some great. language in there first, you know. I don't have a memorized. It means I'm past it. I mean, we have a parking authority. When you create an authority, it does it as the animal of itself. It's a freestanding authority. We have the council appoints the members to it, but they are a freestanding authority that has their function within the borough. I believe our scope of their parking authority is not restrained to the uh, commercial section. But we'll get into it. And in fact, they would be spent. So we can process. go, I mean, honestly, we've dealt with this for years. We've had tried to Years ago, to get a parking place up at the corner of Hill and Presley, it would have been a good idea if you could have got in uh, the property and uh, killed yourself in the wintertime. So. And there was actually a concept, it was just a lot of Yeah. Uh, yep. So, but we will look into it and see what we can do. Cool, guys. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate Thank you. Bob Pryor. Yes. <laughs> just a 
two subjects. The first one is great. Uh, about a week or two ago, uh, I stopped into the uh, Southwestern Pennsylvania Planning Commission's, I think they have a, an annual, a year of the year, two years or something like that. To make a long story short, excuse me, before I walked up to the meeting, I called them and asked them if I could bring down uh, one or two of the large drawings that I showed you by what I consider the solution to the traffic just problems. To a couple, couple. <coughs> gentlemen in charge said, I've never done it before. When I told them about it, they said, we haven't done it. So they actually allowed us to uh, have uh, uh, our large two foot, two, two foot by two foot drawings with all of their uh, 15 drawings. And, uh, well, where was this? The Southwestern Pennsylvania Planning when you say R, you mean yours, not my bird. Okay, of course. I, I would, I would okay, just, just wanted to clarify, you said R's, and I wanted to make sure you oh, meant your. Oh, absolutely. Okay. I've never, I've never heard of Where, where is the planning commission? I've never heard of it. it. It's the main funnel through which every dollar is spent on a road or a bridge. And, and, and where is that help? Or where, where, it, it, where it's is there help? It was a downtown. Buildings near where they, uh, right across the street from the uh, to the hockey arena. Is, I think, in the that was the city that had been down there for years. I think I think uh, some of the other stuff we've done, uh, the importance of that institution. Well, I wanted to get to it was uh, after during the uh, there were about fifty other people that they are uh, listening to some of the comments, <laughs> but. Uh, the fellow that was in charge of transportation, his name was uh, Andy Wakel, I believe. But to make one story short, he, he spent 15 minutes allowing me to explain the importance of the plan to him, and because it solved the, a region, it solved the problem for a salt, for a collier sake and virtual. It wasn't something that I just he said he's never even seen a proposal like that before. He was interested and he asked me for uh, if I had copies of the drawings. I happened to have a copy of my left on the back of the board. I gave it to him and I called him the other day. He said he entered it as a, an official proposal to help the traffic congestion problem there. But you know I'm, I'm primarily interested in uh, uh, Revitalizing the Bridgeville Business District and saving the Baldwin Street Business District so we can have tax generation to alleviate the, uh, the tax burden on the people here. But what I wanted to really talk about tonight, and I'll, I'll try to make it as short as possible, is uh, I'm concerned that the, uh, that the proposal that was made to all of you on how to solve the Baldwin Street flying plan. Just primarily turning into a, uh, a retention lake of about five acres a month, buildings up on top. I, I'm really concerned that you're going to uh, make that uh, make that presentation to some federal agency that has a, a billion dollars to, to spend. Because I think it would really do two things. I, I would think it would reflect poorly on us. Because if we're a community with officials that are willing to give up a five-acre business district that could be redeveloped to be a major tax producer. I think a question or a judgment on that. What I wanted to point out to you was uh, the, 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 the in terms of the uh, solving the uh, Baldwin Street trap uh, flooding problem, there have been four studies done, as you know. The Pennsylvania Department of Transportation did one in 1980. Uh, I did one about four years ago, and I measured all of the, uh, the openings under the bridge to see what the problem was. The University of Pittsburgh students did a study just about nine months ago, and all three of those studies suggested just about the same thing. But the one proposal that your parents are currently considering, I'm not saying that's the only one that you're considering, I'm not saying that you can't make uh, modifications to it. But I was going to say, 
the, this is the one that the university, this is a synopsis of the university, this is the students think. But I just wanted to point out, the, their study essentially cited the problems with the proposal we've been looking at. I can't, the print's too small for me to read about her this here. This plan would include purchasing a large section of Lena out of Baldwin Street. The plan would alleviate the flood risk to that neighborhood because the neighborhood would no longer exist on Baldwin Street. The total cost is around $300 million. The reason for not pursuing this project is uh, constructing other alternatives are, are less costly, uh, additionally displacing residents, et cetera, et cetera. And I don't want to get into the details down here, but the point I'm concerned about is when you make your proposal to the solution to that problem, it would be good if you take some of the copies of these other proposals for the, the, the people with the money to look at. And what else do I want to tell you? Uh, oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, oh, well, yeah, this is, this is strategic, as a matter of fact. Uh, the, the basis of the proposal that seems to be foremost in your mind is, excuse me, is. Uh, it's based on the premise that Bower Hill Road from the cement company to the Wachman Road is defective. It's undermined. Well, that's the same thing you told us the last three or four months. So uh, 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 that well, well, I want to cut it. That's a cinch up. Yeah, well, that's true. That's essential. I think I made it clear. We all, we all understand that. And we have been with the Planning Commission and we're asking to go back over and review. Am I correct? Good. Yeah, because this is, this is the we study by gate. Yeah, but there are other people here who didn't hear that. I don't know just talking about it. Repeated for them. I want to point out again, have you guys looked into, I remember that I took photographs of those 20 down spouts and the 70,000 square foot of space on Bluff Street above, above this section of Bar Hill Road uh, that, that you claim is undermined. Have you guys looked into burying those lines and then running them under Bar Hill Road into the creek? No, we have, not that I know, we haven't got into that part of it. So. Okay, well, that, that's, that, that's it's essential. I'd like to see you guys do it because, as I mentioned to you before, this is this is the drawing. Excuse me. The red arrows show all of the water running from this area down uh, under the Baldwin Street area. And if you take a look at the, uh, this is my last comment. If you when you drive down Barrow Road heading east toward Washington Avenue. If you take a look at the rock structure there, it's all stone, it's all rock. And the gateway boring uh, test indicates that very thing. The, if there's any instability for that 200 foot section of the fire to the road, it's because for 30 to 25 years, the water's been pouring down under that part of the street. And I'd, I'd really, if you guys would, uh, I don't know if the borough employees could, could, could create two of those conduits down or whatever, but I'd really like to see you look into it. I'd like to know, as far as making that, uh, the Carol Eagles proposal to any federal agency, I really wish that you guys would take along some of these other alternatives that have been that provided for you. And incidentally, I think it's a great idea that you're engaging with the people in the audience in your discussion, so I think that's very necessary. Thank you, Bob. Hey, Bob, I got one comment to make. Uh, as far as Baldwin Street properties, FEMA had that program which we presented to the prop some of the property owners down there. Yeah. 10 or 11 of them are looking into accepting it. Yes. Those people want the hell out of there. They can get the money. That's correct. I, I think they should take the money. And if FEMA says that's got to be a green space, fine. If you've got somebody that wants to buy that property off those people from developing, why don't you? Those people are not. Hopefully, it we'll won't flood again like that for another 50 years. But do it with me. I can uh, so okay, give them that shot. You're on the right track. You're on the right track. No doubt about it. My point is the, the FEMA program, when you when you get FEMA to pay for 90% of the building for its leave because the borough can, and they have a general or a specific requirement that area be turned into. Grass, trees, and so on. They do. They, there is the possibility that you get them to turn it into parking lane, and, I, and I, that, that does exist. And I, do, I think Lori has mentioned that. It, by, by getting the people between the present Baldwin Street and Barbara Road, 
the seller property is on the right track. And incidentally, another relatively expensive thing you should think about is, you know, the two one making uh, the San Diego, the Air was planned, making Baldwin Street a major transportation route. But uh, if you make Baldwin Street uh, one way, two lanes going east, you leave Barbara Road, which is this, you know, let it remain uh, two lanes one way going west. All you have to do is build a ramp from the Baldwin Street Bridge, eight feet down to the Baldwin Street. I'm sorry, from the Barker Road to John, it would uh, it would make an enormous difference in there. Okay, you're absolutely right. You're on the right track to expand it so that we're doing something for the entire region and we'll get the money I think it's so much better. Right.
received portion. So depending upon what your date of meeting is in July, I would be wanting to know whether we're running out of this. The 90-day movement limits normally under the MPC unless your board has barely started commencing from the time of referral from the planning commission. So it's not a hard sorry. Exactly. If there's some consideration of tabling it, then we'll make a calendar out. Otherwise, that's those are general rules. It's 90 days to make action. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm going to make the motion uh, based on the recommendation from our engineer or solicitor to uh, consider the application of passing it. And I would recommend again that that motion contain one of the specific conditions that I'll lay at the end of the years of uh, the letter dated off through this date.
might need to go to ulterior motives to try to collect some of that. I hate to see that kind of money sitting out there where you know, we're cutting our pennies and have to you know, put it off a couple of different things. So um, it's something that I'll, I'll have a conversation with the board when she comes back. Thank you, Quick here. Uh, good news, we've got a uh, $36,000 for $36, grant for the Block uh, Run Park ADA restroom restoration renovations done there. The restroom done there was functional, but it was rather outdated. So hopefully, we'll be able to work that in with the work that we'll probably be doing on the ball field for the flood uh, work done there with the rack and so I talked to William about it. She said we should be able to put that in and work on the field at the same time, in the time trial. Uh, the uh, doggy uh, cleanup stations have been placed in the park, down the gazebo park down there at William Little Park. It's on the left hand side, down in Charge Piers. There's one up at the uh, on the trail behind the concession stand up there. There's one up there. So I didn't find the other one down there. There's two down there somewhere. I think it's probably over my shoulder number two. I need to get back here. And, uh, what else? Were the bathrooms almost done in church and park trail? I asked Lori, I talked to Lori for a while, and she said that they're going to the end of June. So, hopefully, it's going to come yeah. soon. And yeah. I know we're going to get calls from the DA. It looks done. I don't know what's inside there. You know, I mean, got the doors on there like, like this. You get told me about the uh, problems with some drums down there were full of water. Evidently, they were BAA drums and they had to clear them. But they're hidden behind that wall in the ladies' room. So they went down, they drilled holes in them and got that stuff out of there. But hopefully, I would, the next couple of weeks, they will be open. And that's all I have. Thank you, Joe. Uh, public works Thank you, Mr. President. As, as you notice, I uh, have you been wondering to you, Vice President, right now, you are the chair, regardless of weather. <laughs> I uh, passed the uh, public board long list that we have, and I just want you to know that we, the three public works people, daily, daily receive where public works are, what they're doing. A lot of that, a lot of this uh, report adds on that, whatever we receive. So we put this together with the help of the uh, Secretary, uh, Shirley, right now, which they're doing a wonderful job, both of them. So as you see, uh, the public they can see the, the good work of public work. That's something that you see there. And you guys will notice every meeting that I pass this to you, that we, you'll know it. Because my English is not that good. The writing is bad, but the English, no. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Bill, public work or public safety? Um, just briefly, we, we have a public safety meeting. We're continuing to work on some pedestrian safety issues and, and examine opportunities to um, always improve those areas of town. Obviously, we've got a lot of things to uh, consider for the next uh, meeting with, with parking, uh, not only on the roadway, but, but all of it appears to be. So we'll, uh, we'll get another meeting scheduled, and then we'll get those issues uh, into consideration. Sounds good. Thank you. Mayor Cook. On May 29th, uh, State Senator Pat Iovino came to Bridgeville to meet with the walking board. Um, I'm grateful to our President Mike Tomer who set up the schedule for that day and he felt that we showcased Bridgeville well and that we have an ally going forward. Um, as we all know, Friday's Flag Day, the service is at Holy Child at 7 o'clock p.m. You're all invited to attend. Also, to bring any flags that you might want to have properly disposed of. And on Saturday is our Bridgeville on the Avenue Day, so we're looking forward to everyone coming out for that. 
And lastly, hats God this day to all of our fathers in the borough and those that are mentors to other children in the community. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Mayor Copeland. Uh, Please, Chief Jeff. Thank you, Vice President. Um, touching on what Councilman Petroselli mentioned earlier about the traffic lights, uh, we did speak last Wednesday in the morning. I believe it was on Thursday. I noticed I was stuck in traffic on Station Street. It was backed up to Kogos and actually around the bend going on to Dewey Avenue. And when the light turned green, I was actually able to make it through. So were all the cars that I could see behind me. So that cleared out a rather large line of traffic, which is pretty encouraging. Um, it's early yet, and that's pretty much the only report I have. But that was a lot of cars to let through there at that time of the morning. It was probably 9 or 9.30. And I don't think in the past, Anytime I've ever seen cars backed up to Dewey Avenue, that light signal has actually let all of them through. So that's early, early, early reports at this time. Um, secondly, as far as Bridgeville down the avenue goes, um, police department has, I think we have 150 bicycle helmets that we will be giving out for free to children. So um, on some other items. So other than that, we'll hope to see you on Saturday. Thank you, sir. Mr. Thank you. I don't have anything. Assistant Fire Chief Mike Mendel, Dan Austin. Got our calls. We had 27 calls for the month of May. We had a building fire. Uh, one of those, uh, eight EMS, yeah, EMS calls to assist them. Uh, two motor vehicle accidents. Uh, five different public service calls. Fire alarm activation due to those and some of the CO due to those. We'll also be there at the day. Uh, we'll have our truck up there. The kids can come check out the trucks. We'll have some little bit of like, toys and hats and stuff for them to have. So we'll be there for that. Thank you, sir. Dan's uh, up here. Uh, Barry, pretty little short. Oops. We need to
the people who thank Father Di Castino for his telling about
um, in the future. So, I was very talked about that. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Saturday, uh, there will be a dunk tank. Uh, the Brentwood Bank and the Brid Bridgeville uh, South Fayette Rotary have uh, uh, joined forces and contributed to rent the dunk tank for the for the day. And we're looking for some personalities. You know, uh, automatically the new fire chief uh, or assistant. Yeah. Will be, uh, <laughs> will be, will be fire chief. <laughs> will be one of them. Uh, we may have to twist the uh, the arm of the other chief, but he, I don't want him mad at me, so I won't say that. I do know Mike Tomer is doing it. There's a certain Nick that's doing it. And uh, Mary, are you interested? Or do I not? Sitting in the dunk tank. In the dunk tank? No. So we'll have some others. Uh, we are going to collect a dollar donation uh, for as many throws as you want. but. That money will go towards the Rotary Scholarship Foundation. So it will go back to the kids. The Rotary does uh, four $1,000 scholarships a year uh, to uh, the school uh, to uh, help the kids through those and spend some college days. So uh, I just wanted to let that be known that there's going to be a lot of obnoxious people sitting up on that, uh, that little chair wanting to get done. I may be. We'll see. <laughs> Thank you. New business? Anybody have any new business? The only thing I have is everybody's talking about the day on the avenue. I know Cheryl was looking for volunteers for the kids' um, bouncy houses and stuff like that. So if anybody's interested, uh, call down and talk to Cheryl to uh, put, their, uh, put their name in to help in that. I know she was looking for that. So. Um, we, we,